Good morning. Welcome to Edgewater Church. Hi, my name is Matt White. I'm one of the pastors serving here. Let's uh, welcome our online community as they join us from lots of faraway places. And I want to let you all know we had a wonderful week of ministry this last week. We've got another great week ahead of us. Tomorrow night we have uh, Celebrate Recovery. And I was given a little note before the service. We have a, a, cus a couple's testimony and they're going to speak about how out of their brokenness, God was able to use them and, and he did amazing things in their lives. So tomorrow night is that couple's testimony. It should be amazing. Today we're going to be starting our Sermon on the Mount series and we're going to be talking about the Beatitudes. And if you didn't notice when you were coming in the building today, there were some bees out there because when I was talking to Lou, our thrift store manager, she thought it was all about bees, the Beatitudes. And uh, she was saying, you know, have you ever seen that Nickelodeon program where they get the awards and they have the green slime and it drops on top of people? She was wanting to do that with honey at the entrance of the church. And I said, that's just, that would just be too much. And then she had another idea. She said, why don't we have Pastor James, he can be like a beekeeper and he can, he can chase me around the sanctuary while you're giving your message. And I, I said, no, that's way too distracting. We can't do that. But I, I did like that idea, though. That was a good... <laughs> but how did you all like our bees that were out front today? <laughs> so we're going to be getting into the Beatitudes. And, you know, I feel super blessed because last week I got to share what was known as the greatest parable ever shared, the prodigal son. And then this Sunday, we're kicking off the Sermon on the Mount, which was has been considered the greatest sermon ever preached that Jesus shared. And we're going to get... We're going to look at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount today, but let's pray and ask God to bless our time together. Oh Lord, what a great joy it is to come together in this place today to worship you. As we come together, we ask you, Lord, to transform and change our lives. Help us to live out the Beatitudes. Help us to live out your truth. Help us, Lord, to be changed by you. And as we celebrate Holy Communion today, Lord, we pray that you would make all of the necessary adjustments in our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord, to be your people. Help us to fully surrender to you and experience your grace in new and amazing ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as, we, as you have your sermon notes, uh, there's a few uh, life application questions there. There's a prayer. I would encourage you to share that with someone. Maybe you have a neighbor or a friend, someone that's not able to be here. May you be a great connection with others to the ministry here at Edgewater Church and to people that are on, in different places on their spiritual journey. Now I invite you to open up your hearts and lives and receive God's holy word. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Let us praise God today for his holy word. As we take a look at the Beatitudes today, this is an overview of what the kingdom of God is all about. And this is how the followers of Christ should live their lives. We should be the ones that identify with Christ and live in a way that honors and, and exalts him. And here... This is an overview of the happy or blessed life. Some versions actually use the word happy. But in our culture, the word happy almost seems like it's been watered down a little bit when you compare the word happy with blessed. 
So as we look at the Beatitudes today, this is really about the blessed life, the kind of life that God has, has, uh, has really poured his spirit out upon. Uh, it's going God's way, God's direction, and it's a life that is fully yielded and surrendered to God, which is great because on, as we celebrate Holy Communion today, once again, this is our time to empty our lives out and to let God fill our hearts and bring in everything that's missing. So our part is to respond to God's grace, and God meets us as we respond to his grace, and he does his part by making all of these beatitudes a present, ongoing reality in our lives. He is able to activate the beatitudes in each one of us. So here we have Jesus. He goes up onto the mountainside, and lots and lots of people were following him, his, his closest followers and many others. And it shows the humility of Christ when he sits down to teach. Isn't that amazing? He sat down to teach them. And as he is teaching them, uh, he, he talks about this blessed life. He talks about how uh, if you're poor in spirit, you're blessed. And here in our world, we think, oh, to be blessed, you have to be rich in material possessions, right? That's what a lot of people think. You're blessed when you have a lot of stuff. But here Jesus says, you're blessed when you're poor in spirit, when you're needy, when you're spiritually destitute, when you're on empty. And he says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So often in life, we're, it's very difficult to be able to say, I need help. And sometimes pride gets in the way, right? When we know, okay, I need a lot of help, but this could be embarrassing. And pride can push, a, you know, kind of push that, that willingness to respond to help aside. Have you ever really needed help, but you didn't want to inconvenience someone? You thought, oh, I'm not going to really ask for help. But this is really the first step. And at Celebrate Recovery, this is really the beginning, recognizing I need help. I'm at rock bottom. I'm in a very low, pitiful place, and I need someone to help me here. And, and Jesus says, when you're in that place, you truly are blessed. So it's okay to be able to say, I need help. And it's okay for you to tell me, you need help, <laughs> right? We can tell that to other people, right? You need help. And then Jesus says, <laughs> blessed are those who mourn. You know, when your heart is able to break for the very things that break the heart of God, when God, God's heart is breaking, when God is um, full of compassion, when we are able to have a broken heart and see the needs of others, we're reminded here definitively that when you mourn, you will be comforted. Not you might be comforted, you will. They will be comforted. So here we set this proclamation, this declaration of being blessed, blessed when we mourn. We will be comforted. Not you might be comforted or it's a possibility, but you will be comforted. And then here, blessed are the meek. You know, Jesus was described as one that was meek and mild. And Moses, of all people, was also described as someone that was meek. Meek, the word here, means a gentle strength. And God has a way of giving strength to us when we humble. The Bible says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So when we are able to humble ourselves before God, he is right there for us. And we're reminded that when we are humble, when we are meek, we will inherit the earth. God provides everything for us. And then it goes on to say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Righteousness, the word righteous means to be in right standing with God. I don't know about you, but I like to make sure that everything is right between me and God, right? No unconfessed sin, making sure that we take a personal inventory of our hearts and lives and then letting it go. Now, over the course of our lives, we hunger and thirst for lots of different things. You might hunger for grandma's best recipe. You might hunger for something that, that's maybe a terrible thing, like you're, you're hungering and going after something that's really wrong. Have you ever done that before? You're, you're hungering for something 
But that's the wrong kind of hunger. Have you ever found yourself really thirsty? Um, I remember uh, years ago, my, my older brother and my younger brother, we were uh, top runners in Ohio. And my older brother won a lot of big races, and I won a bunch of races. My younger brother won a bunch of races. But one time, my older brother won a really big race, and they took a picture of him right after the race. And he had white cotton mouth all around his mouth, and it was like really disgusting and gross. And it was on the front of the sports section of the Columbus Dispatch for Central Ohio. And my brother was like, couldn't they have picked a little bit better picture? But you know, after running a long cross-country race, you're totally parched and you're ready to drink. And you could see that he was so thirsty in that picture. He looked like he was about ready to die, you know? And uh, I remember when I was younger, I would go on like eight and 10 mile runs. And I would get home in the middle of the summer and I would be begging for my little sister to get me something to drink. Sarah, Sarah, get me a drink, I'm gonna die. Get me a drink. And I remember how thirsty I was after those long workouts. Have you ever had one of those days where you worked out in the yard or the time when you did a long workout and you were just so thirsty and you were ready? Well, that's thirsting for water, you know, or thirsting for Gatorade or whatever, but we're supposed to thirst, hunger and thirst for righteousness. And when we do that, we will be satisfied. We will truly be filled. So God makes that change. The word that's described of the change that God makes in our lives is metamorphosis. You've all heard that word before. But he brings about a change where he gives us the right kind of desire. So we hunger and thirst after the things that truly honor him. And then Jesus goes on to say, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. I remember as a kid or a younger person watching the Karate Kid series of movies. How many of you remember Karate Kid, the Karate Kid? And do you remember the really, the loser coach for the other guy that was like the really terrible, that, the guy that had no sportsmanship and he kept yelling, no mercy! And he was trying to get him to sweep his leg out and, and do all kinds of illegal things in the competition. And he was like, they were yelling out, no mercy. Well, that's really the way of the world, right? No mercy. But the way of Jesus is a way of having great mercy and being merciful. And you know, when you are able to show mercy, when you are able to be merciful, you then, the Bible says, will be shown mercy. And so God wants us to be people that are not phony and fake, but real. And he wants us to have the real pure character that's being described here in the Beatitudes. And then Jesus goes on to say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. How many of you, if I gave you a, a, a bottle of water, if it said 50% pure, how many, of you, how many of you would want to try it out? 50% pure. You would think, Gross. I'm not going to I'm not going to give that to anyone. We actually during hurricane the hurricane after the hurricane we had a bunch of water that was donated and it kind of smelled like mold. <laughs> and we were drinking it and people said that's like moldy water. And they said we just need to throw all of that away. We can't we can't risk our reputation as Edgewater Church of giving away a bunch of moldy water. And I said, I agree, I agree. And so we just got rid of all of it. But it wasn't pure. It, it was like 50% it, it like pure water, 50% wastewater or something. I don't know what it was, but it was like, it was definitely not good. And so we said, no, 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 we can't give this stuff out. No, we're not doing that, right? But think about it. God wants us to be pure in heart. He wants us to have pure character. And Jesus wouldn't say you're blessed when you're, when you're pure in heart if he wasn't going to help make that happen, right? And in life, we all have different things that we struggle with and different things that mess us up in this area, right, where we lose our purity. Maybe we have unforgiveness or maybe we have a bunch of hate towards someone. Or, and that takes away the purity of heart that God wants us to have. But then Jesus says when you, when you are pure in heart, you will see God. But you know, I, I actually don't believe we have to wait until we get to heaven to see God. We can see God right here in our midst. 
we can see God all around at work as we serve him. And then Jesus goes on, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Some versions, they will be called children of God. That's a tough one too, right? Think about it, gossip, um, division, um, few family feuds, <laughs> all of the things that happen in life, but God wants us to be peacemakers and to have his peace in our lives and to take his peace and his presence wherever we go and we'll be called children of God. And then the last two are often joined together, proclamations of blessing. And most people are not going to say, please sign me up for, this, for these ones. Please sign me up, because it actually involves persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. And Jesus says, rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. And he says, you know, that, that, that's the same way they, in the same exact way they persecuted the prophets that were before you. I remember years ago when I was uh, up earlier on in my Christian days, when I was at the University of Virginia, we would share the good news at the amphitheater. We would have the leader of the Korean Christian Fellowship, leader of the Black Christian Fellowship. I was one of the leaders of Cavalier Christian Fellowship and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And we would openly testify. And we would have people say the craziest things, yelling at us, like heckling. And we would just usually smile and kind of laugh because it would, it would be kind of humorous, but it would be kind of low, you know? So we would just kind of laugh, but we're going to be persecuted because of our faith. Jesus promises persecution is a part of the Christian way of life. If you travel to some parts of the world, you will be encouraged and built up because of your Christian faith. But you can travel to different parts of the world where you will be persecuted if people find out that you are a follower of Jesus. And if you say that Jesus is God, which is what we believe, that is a real problem in some parts of the world because there are many people in the world that do not believe that Jesus is God. They don't believe in the Holy Trinity, but we do. So, uh, but we're told that we should rejoice and be glad when this kind of insult and persecution comes our way because we have this very special award, reward waiting for us in heaven. And it's happened to other believers who have gone before us, and it's going to happen to us. And so here we have this amazing overview. We're, we're reminded that we are blessed to be a blessing. It's not about how much we are given, but what we do with what we're given. You've often seen the Christian t-shirts. People will wear a t-shirt, too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. You know, and I do like those Christian t-shirts, but it's true. We are, we are super blessed because of God. When we are faithful, when we follow the Lord, he provides all of these special blessings. He changes our attitude and the, our focus in life. When we look at the Beatitudes, we can see that it's a spiritual journey that we're on, and God gives us a renewed, new kind of spirit. He gives us, according to the Beatitudes, we have a broken spirit. We have a penitent or a spirit that repents. We have a gentle spirit, a hungering and thirsting spirit, a compassionate and merciful spirit, a pure spirit, a wise and prayerful spirit. And finally, God tells us that we have a long-suffering and forgiving spirit, all because of the great work of God in our lives. And so today, as we get ready to celebrate Holy Communion, maybe you're realizing that your spiritual life doesn't really line up with the Beatitudes. Maybe you're living in a polar opposite way, the way of the world. And maybe God wants to move your life, change the course of your life around so that by God's grace, you can live according to the Beatitudes. Jesus promises a life that is superior in quality and unending in quantity, a never-ending life when we yield and surrender to him. When we celebrate Holy Communion, we have that opportunity to let it go.
and to just fully yield to God in, in this time. So let's pray and ask God as we prepare to celebrate communion. Oh Lord, we know that as we read and hear about the Beatitudes, it's impossible for us to produce these things in our lives with our own resources. But we thank you, Lord, that you have vast, unlimited resources, that by your Spirit, all of these Beatitudes can be activated in us. We ask you, Lord, to help each one of us be changed from the inside out. Help us, Lord, to be people that are a part of your kingdom, that live according to your values and your ways, yielded and surrendered to you. And so as we get ready, Lord, to celebrate Holy Communion, help us to be true to you. Take away from us the things that don't belong in our lives and put in our hearts and in our lives everything that we need to live this blessed life that you described to your early followers. It's still a blessed life following you today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.